Hey guys, Ms. Smithlows here with our second lecture of chapter four. And today we're going to be solving similar problems, just we're going to be learning a new method. So today, the second method we are going to be using is Kramer's rule. And I actually prefer to use Kramer's rule in three by threes, um, just because like we saw in chapter three, it's very systematic. We do the same thing every single time. Now, in this particular chapter, we know our answer should be ordered triples. So this time, in order to get my answer, I'm going to do d sub x divided by d, d sub y divided by d, d sub z divided by d. So yes, that is correct. Today, we are going to be finding four different determinants, d, d sub x, d sub y, and d sub z. And I'm sure you are really excited about it. So... Here's our first example today, and so we have our three equations, and I've just kind of written off to this side some steps that we are going to do. Um, the very first thing we are going to do when we go ahead and write our determinant, um, just like last chapter, first column is going to be x, second column is going to be y, this is the new part, my third column is going to be the z column. So, the first thing I'm going to do after I write those is rewrite the first two columns. Then, I'm going to multiply across the diagonals. Last time, we just had our little two by two where I started in the top left and we made our little fish. This chapter, we're going to go across the diagonals three times until I run out of three by three, or I'm sorry, until I run out of diagonals that have three terms in them. Then, I'm going to subtract baby and multiply the diagonals going the opposite way. So if we think about it, it's kind of like Mr. Determine Fish, except for this time it's giant. It's a determine whale. Um, after we do that, we're going to find the sum. So let's go ahead and get started on this first example. Just kidding. Before we get into our first example, um, I'm skipping ahead to number two, and I want to go through one that is actually a little bit easier to show us how we're going to do this. So as I said before, the very first thing I'm going to do, um, in this problem, this is already set up for us, so I just need to go ahead and rewrite the first two columns. Now I'm going to start in the top left-hand corner. So I'm going to start up here and multiply across this diagonal. So I have... 2 times 1 times 3, which is 6. My next three call or three number diagonal, I would do 1 times 4 times 1, which is 4. Next, I'm going to do my next diagonal that has three numbers. Notice this is our last one that has three numbers in it. So I'm going to do 1 times 2 times 5, which is 10. Now Mr. Determine Fish says subtract baby, so I'm going to put a minus sign, and I'm going to work backwards. So I'm going to get a nice little color there for me, and now I'm going to start the top right hand, and I'm going to go here, here, and here. So when I start with this first one, 1 times 2 times 3 is 6. My second diagonal 2 times 4 times 5 is 40. Lastly, 1 times 1 times 1 is 1. So now I'm going to go ahead and add these together so I get 20 minus 47, which is negative 27. Okay, so once again, just to kind of walk us through what we did here, I took these first two columns and rewrote them again. Then we multiplied all the diagonals that had three numbers. When I ran out of those, I did subtract baby and multiplied backwards all the diagonals that have three numbers. Then I found the sum of this expression. Okay, so let's jump back to number one. And um, the good news is this is really the only system we're going to do in our notes for today. I think if we figure out how to do this one, um, the rest are very repetitive. So we're going to start by finding determinant D. 
Once again, we said our first column should be our x coefficients. This time I'm missing something there, so I'm going to go ahead and fill in a zero. So I'm going to write three, four, zero. And just so you guys know, zeros are your friend. They are because it's going to make life so much easier for us because we know when we multiply anything times zero is zero. Okay, second column, my y coefficient. So that would be two, one, and negative three. The third column are our z coefficient. So negative one, negative two, and one. Now I'm going to go ahead and rewrite my first two columns. And now we're ready to go. So when I start, 3 times 1 times 1 is 3. 2 times negative 2 times 0 is 0. Negative 1 times 4 times negative 3 is positive 12. Mr. Determifish says, subtract, baby. Now we're going to work backwards. 2 times 4 times 1 is 8. I don't know why I was writing 6 there. Let me erase that. Okay, so we have 8. 3 times negative 2 times negative 3 becomes positive 18. And then when I do my last one, my friend 0 is there. So that makes my life a little bit easier. So I have 15 minus 26, which becomes negative 11. Okay, so just kind of a side note, D equals negative 11. As you can already tell, this problem is going to be giant. It's going to take us a while, but that's okay because we are smart, we persevere, and we can do it. So, let's go ahead and find d sub x. I'm going to go ahead and fit it on the same screen here. So, d sub x. I know that my first column, this time, since we're finding x, should be my constants. So, I have 5, 8, 9. My second column are my y coefficients. So, I have 2, 1, negative 3. My last column are my z coefficients, so I have negative 1, negative 2, 1. Once again, I'm going to start by rewriting my first two columns. So now we're going to go 5 times 1 times 1 is 5. 2 times negative 2 times 9 becomes negative 36. Negative 1 times 8 times negative 3 becomes positive 24. Then Mr. Determinfish says, subtract, baby. And I'm working backwards. 2 times 8 times 1 is 16. 5 times negative 2 times negative 3 becomes 30. I'm running out of room, but we'll make do. Negative 1 times 1 times 9 becomes negative 9. So now I need to add these together. 5 minus 36 plus 24 becomes negative 7 minus 16 plus 30 minus 9 is 37. So negative 7 minus 37, I get d sub x is equal to negative 44. So some things that we can already kind of sense. Our x value is going to be negative 44 divided by negative 11. We know we need to simplify as much as possible, so we already kind of know our x value is going to be 4. Okay, so next up, let's go ahead and do d sub y. This time, I know if I'm finding d sub y, my y column is going to be replaced by my constants. So I get... 3, 4, 0, 5, 8, 9, negative 1, negative 2, 1. I know that I need to rewrite my first two columns, and now we're going to get going. 
3 times 8 times 1 becomes 24. 5 times negative 2 times 0 is 0. Negative 1 times 4 times 9 is negative 36. Now I know Mr. Determine Fish or Determine Whale tells us to subtract. And we're going to work backwards. 5 times 4 times 1 is 20. 3 times negative 2 times 9 is negative 54. And my last one, since I have a 0 there, I just get 0. So I have negative 12 minus 20 minus 54 is negative 34. When I combine these, negative 12 minus negative 34 becomes positive 22. So d sub y is equal to 22. Last but not least, we're going to find d sub z here. Okay, so I have 3, 4, 0, 2, 1, negative 3. And lastly, I'm going to put 5, 8, and 9 in for that column. Okay, 3, 4, 0, 2, 1, negative 3, because I had to rewrite my first two columns. So here we go. 3 times 1 times 9 is 27. 2 times 8 times 0 is 0. 5 times 4 times negative 3 becomes negative 60. Minus 2 times 4 times 9 is 72. 3 times 8 times negative 3 becomes minus 72. And lastly, I get another 0. So when I combine these, I get negative 33 minus 0, which is d sub z equals negative 33. So now, let's go ahead and try and figure out all of our values. So we know we need to do d sub x divided by d, d sub y divided by d, and d sub z divided by d. So I'm going to go ahead and do negative 44 divided by negative 11. Negative, I'm sorry, 22 divided by negative 11, and negative 33 divided by negative 11. And I'm going to write my answer up here because I have room. And I end up getting 4, negative 2, positive 3. Now, in order to ensure that this works, let's do a quick check. In my first equation, 12 minus 4 is 8, 8 minus 3 is 5, so it works. Second equation, 16 minus 2 is 14, 14 minus 6 is 8. Lastly, I have 6 plus 3 is 9, which also works. So here we go. That is Kramer's rule for 3 by 3s. I know it can be a little time consuming. However, once again, it's very systematic. I'm doing the same thing every single time. What I normally prefer to do, if it's not specifically asking me to use Kramer's rule, if I have a question that is open-ended, like use whatever method you want, I will normally use Kramer's rule to find x and y. So I'll do th these three determinants, d, d sub x, and d sub y. And then I'll substitute into one of the equations to find my third um, variable. So just know that if it's open-ended on the test or on a quiz, you guys have some options as to how you need to solve it. If it specifically asks us to solve using Kramer's rule, then I need to be really specific and find d, d sub z, d sub y, d sub x, and all that fun stuff. So, these are the only two methods that we are learning for 3x3, three three, so now you guys can kind of decide which one you prefer.